Hello everybody and welcome back to Odin's Movie Blog. I am the critic who is a cynic and today we're going to be talking about an article here from Bloomberg where the headline states, Disney's Star Wars headaches include outcry from its own fans. Is Bloomberg finally going to be a mainstream media outlet that's actually going to cover the story, that's actually going to tell the truth about what's going on with Star Wars? We shall see. I haven't actually read the whole article because I like to try and do live reactions to any of these articles that I read. So let's just dive right into it. So the first thing I want to point out is it's interesting that this is written by three different people. This this is a story so huge that they needed three whole writers in order to get this entire thing put together at 11 p.m. at night. So should be interesting. Hopefully, hopefully it's good. All right, let's see. So, once again, Walt Disney Company is at odds with Star Wars fans. Well, yes, I mean, that's putting it lightly. I mean, the Star Wars, literally Lucasfilm, because it's not really Walt Disney at this point, it's Lucasfilm is literally attacking fans. At least members and representatives of Lucasfilm are literally attacking fans. And so just to say that they're at odds is kind of, you know, underselling it a little bit. It says, after a poor performance, poor is just also underselling it, by Solo, a Star Wars story, a movie poised to become the first money-losing film in the series, Disney faces criticism over how it's managing one of Hollywood's most lucrative franchises. The company is dealing with reports that its next standalone Star Wars movie may be delayed in an effort by one faction of fans to remake The Last Jedi, which came out in December. So there's a couple of things in here. For one, this is going to lose money. I mean, there literally is no way, there's no market, there's just no numbers to back up this not not losing at least $200 million at this point. I was talking to somebody in a live stream the other day and they were saying, I, I mean, I don't see how it couldn't be $300 million since this film needed to make based on its budget needed to make around 715 million and so therefore if it's if it's not even going to make 400 million then wouldn't that, wouldn't that be 300 315 million and i would agree with that but again i still want to wait for all the numbers to come in because i do think that this will probably reach or at least get close to 400 million which means it'll be closer to again that 200 million dollar loss instead but it's just it does not look good at all i really do think that it's going to be closer to that 300 million like my heart says that but i also just want the numbers to back that up so to say that this is poised to become though no, this is guaranteed at this point to lose money again there's not like there's some market that it hasn't opened in it's not that they're just going to start buying people are just going to start buying tickets to this film because that's just not how things work especially when you're four or five weeks out like this so no this movie is going to lose money the second thing they mentioned is talking about how now the reports have come out about the the people trying to remake The Last Jedi. So this is actually separate from Ivan Ortega, who's also recutting The Last Jedi. And it's just amazing to me because these are people who are literally trying to give us a product that people can actually enjoy. I mean, again, look at the ratings for Last Jedi. Look at the uh, you know Rotten Tomatoes score. And that pretty much is accurate. 50% of people hated it. 50% of people liked it. Look to Ryan Johnson's own, own words where he says, I want to make a movie that half the people like and half the people hate. And guess what? He did that. He succeeded. But unfortunately, it was a Star Wars film, and now the Star Wars franchise has been in the decline ever since. Because that film was $700 million less than The Force Awakens, and now we see Solo, which is the film right after it, now losing money. Losing at least 200 to $300 million. So yeah, this is just... I mean, Star Wars is in, is in such a state right now. So, so far, this article hasn't gone off you know, off the rails too much, but it's definitely undercutting and underselling a lot of the pro uh, a lot of the points so far. All right, so it goes on. So it goes on. For Disney, outcry for the series' fervent fan base is nothing new, but the company was less vulnerable uh, to attacks when it had an impeccable track record. That's true. After a week showing, again, underselling, by solo and disappointing sales of Star Wars toys last holiday season, again, underselling, because ever since, really, The Last Jedi, the sales have just been terrible. They're not going to talk about that. Yeah, hmm, what came out the last holiday season? Oh, wait, that's right. Star Wars The Last Jedi. So again, if you if you actually look at the numbers and you actually just use simple logic, you can understand why the problems exist and where they're coming from. But uh, no one has yet to point that out yet. At least as far as like mainstream articles, no one has yet to cover it and really point it out. I think the closest that we got to it was the Daily Wire, but I would not consider that to be a major publication at this point. Again, it's it's large. I'm not, I'm not trying to undersell them. But compared to a Bloomberg or a CNN or Fox News or, you know, one of the major media conglomerates, none of them have really touched it in a way that I feel is worth, you know, worth talking about. So I feel like it's undercutting it. So it goes on and says, there's more evidence than ever that people are growing weary of the franchise. The growth of social media also has made it easier for fans to complain, but also not just that, but also to come together to say, hey, wait a minute, that person said something that I agree with. I mean, that's why you have Geeks and Gamers growing, World Class BSers, Ethan Van Skyver, uh, you know, Jesse uh, Milestone. 
Anna, that Star Wars girl. That's why you have all of these channels growing tremendously because people are fed up with it. And now there's finally a way for people to express it and come together at the same time. So, yeah, I mean, obviously they can complain, but it's also people coming together, keeping things. Because, again, you can say, oh, they're so negative, they're so toxic. But whenever I see these communities, whenever I see these live streams, whenever I see these comments, the vast majority of it is just positive, wanting to save, wanting to bring Star Wars back to its glory, essentially. Because... Star Wars was just so special for so long, and now we see Star Wars in the decline. A Star Wars film is now losing money. None of us want to see that, but we know why that's happening, and no one is talking about it. So that, of course, we're frustrated, but again, it's all based on things that are just so based in logic and reality, so that's why it's even more frustrating because there are so many people who just choose to ignore it, and it's just insane. All right, goes on. In the grand scheme of things, every Star Wars movie has been divisive on some level because of how passionate the fan base is, said Sean Robbins, interesting, chief analyst at Research Film Box Office Pro. It's just more apparent now with social media bringing those voices to the for forefront. Okay, I would agree and disagree with that statement because, yes, you could say that the prequels were divisive because they were, but when you talk about the original trilogy... Those, mon those movies made so much money and have such a high positive fan reaction, you really can't make that same argument. Were there probably some people who did not like them nearly as much or liked one movie over the other? Sure. Even with the prequels, you can see that as well. But even us, you know, even people like anyone, anyone with common sense would say, no, there is a huge difference th from what's going on now than what went on then. Because, yes, there were people who were very divisive and very uh, upset about the prequels, I being one of them. I thought they were trash. But at the same time, it has never been this bad because those were just poorly made films. This is something different. This is someone who's taking charge, namely Kathleen Kennedy, Ryan Johnson, who's trying to essentially take over the universe and put in their own political garbage into it instead. So this is something very different than the prequels, which, in my opinion, were just bad films. There's a lot of people that defend them. This is a little bit different because, again, this is almost – it feels like a takeover in a lot of ways where, again, you have these huge, you know, huge powers at Lucasfilm – directors, producers, etc., who are just injecting their nonsense, injecting their political nonsense, and destroying Star Wars from the inside. So it's very different than what it was for the prequels going forward. So again, not really getting it quite on the nose yet, Bloomberg, Bloomberg but hopefully you get on track a little, in a little bit. All right, so Star Wars Studio Lucasfilm, which Disney acquired for $4 billion in 2012, has had a series of production hiccups that have burst into the public realm. Since 2014, when Chief Executive Bob Iger laid out plans for three episodes and at least three spinoff films, uh, movies, films have needed reshoots, rewrites, or changes in directors, namely two of them, again, okay, namely two, and it was because they disagreed with who? Kathleen Kennedy. Again, there's someone who's at the center of all of this. She is the one who's at the center of, you know, Ryan Johnson and everything that he did, you know, just greenlighting all of that. And she was the producer, so she could have said, she was the head of Lucasfilm. She could have said, hey, I don't think this is a good idea. This is going to tick off a lot of people. And yes, you can make some, you know, some very uh, brave decisions. You can make some, you know, risky choices, but you can't have like most of a movie be nothing but a risk with no real reward for the fans. Again, most, most people don't want to see a movie like that. And again, the $700 million loss between that and Force Awakens pretty much confirmed that going forward. And now we see that continue because Solo, you know, we had, again, Lord and Miller, who were probably going to make a really funny film, did not agree with Kathleen Kennedy. Kathleen Kennedy fired them. And Rogue One, too. I, I didn't really like Rogue One all that much. I know a lot of people did. But guess what? There was disagreements with Kathleen Kennedy, and there were a lot of reshoots, and it's just been absolute chaos. And Kathleen Kennedy is the one who's at the center of this. So I've yet to see them talk about Kathleen Kennedy or put any blame on her, even though it's very, ob ob very obvious and very straightforward. But, again, we have a little bit left. Let's see if they get to it. Uh, with Solo, Disney shifted course in the middle of production and brought in Ron Howard as a replacement director, potentially potentially its costliest move yet. Well, yeah, because it ballooned the budget well over $500 million, and it's barely going to make $400 million, and they only get 60% of that $400 million. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be costly. It's hundreds of millions of dollars. Even a big corporation like Disney... Hundreds of millions of, millions of dollars is not, uh, is not so small that they can just, you know you know, brush it off. And the gamut didn't pay off at the box office. Nope. The studio ultimately may have to write off 50 million on the movie. <laughs> Where do these people, this is someone from Barton Crockett. Are you kidding me? Where are you getting your numbers from? Where are you getting these numbers from? They are all there on box office mojo. They are all there for us to see. Even me, someone who hates math, can break down the numbers and tell you, no, this is going to lose at least $200 million. So I don't know where you lost that other $150 million, but, oh man, Bloomberg, you, you're you supposed to be like the numbers website. What's going on here? I, I, I was expecting a little bit more, but 
<sighs> I guess I guess you've been taken over too. Let's see. Uh, that outcome was followed by a report on the movie website Collider that the next spinoff movie is now on hold. Interesting that that was then debunked. So Collider again. Essentially, the hand that fed them is now smacking them down. It's interesting how Lucasfilm and, and you know all of them work. But a person familiar with Disney's plan said it's not accurate to say the spinoffs have been tabled. I, I mean, they have. They haven't necessarily been tabled, but they've definitely been you know stopped and paused for the moment. They might still do pre-production, but there is absolutely no way that they are going forward at the speed that they once were. Because once you lose two hundred million dollars minimum at you know for a movie. You are going to step back and say, okay, let's take our time. Let's do episode nine correct. Let's try and make some money off of it. And then from there, game plan. Because really, that's the only smart move that they have. If they were smart, if they wanted to continue to you know, build this universe and to make money off of this universe, that's what they would do. Now, with people like Kathleen Kennedy in charge, that's not going to happen. They're just going to go full bore into their political nonsense, and Star Wars is going to continue to crumble. But... We'll actually see what happens because, again, when it comes to this, it, it, there's just no way they can be going forward as much as they were. So Disney, based in Burbank, said it does not comment on Star Wars rumors, so that might be true. And then this is just a roadmap of everything going forward. So this is just talking about how, you know, there is the Game of Thrones, uh, you know, it's right there, it says David Beninoff. And D.B. Weiss, you know, they do excellent work on Game of Thrones, so oh, I'm so excited to see what they can do. If you're going to greenlight anything, it should be that, because those are competent people who made an excellent series as Game of Thrones, one of the most popular series ever, Game of Thrones, and I think that they would do excellent work with the Star Wars universe as well, so keep that going. Everything going on with the other person that they mentioned there, Ryan Johnson, that should be just totally canceled, because I'm sorry, no one's going to go see it. I mean, people People have a very long memory, and people are going to say, wait a minute, this is the guy that made The Last Jedi? I am not going to see this movie, and guess what? Those are going to be the next Star Wars films to lose money at the box office if they keep going the way they are. So that's definitely going to be next. The only thing really going forward we have is, again, December 2019 when Episode Nine comes out with J.J. Abrams. J.J. Abrams, I thought, did very well on The Force Awakens, so I do have some hope that Episode Nine could be good, but they got to get those knuckleheads out. they got to get people like... Kathleen Kennedy out. They got to get Ryan Johnson as far away from Star Wars as possible, and Chuck Wendig and uh, uh, John Kasdan and Pablo Hidalgo. All those people, all those people, got to be as far away from this pro project as possible. Because if they're not, we're gonna have a really, you know, Disney's gonna be in big trouble. Star Wars is gonna be in big trouble, and we don't want Star Wars to fail. Do we want people like Kathleen Kennedy to fail? Absolutely. We want those people to fail, but we do not want Star Wars to fail. And there's an easy way to do that. There's an easy way to reconcile both of those things. Get rid of those people and save Star Wars. It's very simple. All right, guys. So what do y'all think? Do you Have y'all read this article from Bloomberg? What are your thoughts on it? Uh, please let me know in the comments below. I'd greatly appreciate it. Again, it's interesting that it took three people to really write that and get this all to put together. But hey, I guess that's the world that we live in now. When it takes 20 people just to write a song, I guess if it takes three people to write an article that just glosses over reality, then I guess that also works as well. So thank you all very much, guys, for watching. Please hit that like if you liked it. Please hit that subscribe as you liked it as well. I greatly appreciate it. Also, if you like this video, please share it as well. Again, it really Really does help me out a lot and also I do greatly appreciate it so have a great day guys and as always God bless